Hello, everybody, and welcome to this dose of virtual vitamin Z. My name is Brad. I'm an education specialist for the Detroit Zoological Society. And today we are going to be learning all about the West African Gaboon Viper, who is this guy behind me. Um, so we'll be learning about the West African Gaboon Viper and taking some time to show you an activity that you can do at home or uh, around your community. But before we start, I would like to share some vocabulary words with you so you know what I'm talking about. So the first vocabulary word we are going to go over today is venom. Um, sometimes people mix up venom and poison, uh, but venom is a combination of at least one or more toxins that animals create in their body that can either be bitten or stung or somehow injected into um, another animal. Um, so poison is something that you you consume, you like swallow it or eat it. Venom, toxins that are injected. And then camouflage. And camouflage is either color or combinations of patterns that help uh, an animal blend into their surroundings. So the West African Gaboon Viper um, has both of these. They, they are a venomous snake and they're really, really good at camouflage. They are camouflage experts. The West African Gaboon Viper like its name, lives in West Africa. So we can see this range right here, all the black on the map. That is where the Gaboon Viper lives. And they live in rainforests in Africa and in the surrounding wooded forested areas around those. If you can't go to Africa though, you can always come to the Detroit Zoo and see the West African Gaboon Viper that lives here. So come with me, let's go see the Gaboon Viper. So you'll have to come to the Holden Reptile Conservation Center. That is where the Gaboon Viper lives. And um, he is in this habitat right here. So I'm going to give everyone a, a second to see if you can find him. If you see him, you can point to him on the screen. You can type in the chat. See if you can see him. Let's get a little bit closer. He's, he's got really good camouflage. Really good camouflage. He's blending in pretty well. Can you see him yet? And point them out, type where he is. I'll change the angle a little bit. Maybe zoom in. Do you all see him yet? Maybe I'll change the angle one more time so we can really get a good view of him. There he is. That is the West African Gaboon Viper. Um, there is one Gaboon Viper that lives here and uh, here he is. Like I said, really good camouflage. You can see blending in. They have this really striking pyramid uh, hourglass pattern on their back. And even their head, his head kind of looks like a leaf. So his camouflage is really good. He can blend in with the surroundings. Um, he likes to lay among the leaf litter on the bottom of his habitat. And the Gaboon Vipers also has this really distinct almost horn. It's these scales that grow up on the front of their nose. Here's a good shot of that camouflage. So you can see the different patterns and colors that kind of help break up the, the shape of their body. So in the wild, the Gaboon Viper is a sit and wait predator, um, which you can see here he is sitting and waiting. Um, they like to hide among the leaves. Their, their camouflage really helps them blend in and they just wait. And if a small uh, rodent or bird flies uh, by or crawls by, hops by, that's when they will bite them um, and inject them with that venom. So they use their camouflage to help. You can see again, those, those colors. Um, they just kind of wait. And then when an animal comes by, that's when they bite them with that, with that venom. Um, so the Gaboon Viper, really good camouflage, but also really venomous. Um, and this is a cool video. You can actually see the Gaboon Viper breathing in this. You can see the scales slightly moving as his belly rises and falls. Um, so back to the venom though. So Gaboon Viper is really, really venomous. Um, they actually have the second highest yield of venom after the King Cobra. The other interesting thing about the Gaboon Viper though is it can control how much venom it releases. So sometimes a bite could be completely harmless or sometimes a bite can be extremely fatal. Um, but that being said, Gaboon Vipers uh, biting humans is really, really uncommon. They're much more placid and shy and kind of reserved. Um, so even though they are venomous, they don't hunt humans, right? We have nothing to be afraid of. Um, they're, they're, they're more docile, they kind of wait, and like I said, bites are very rare. And in fact, if they see a human, uh, they'll actually let out this very long and loud hiss um, to kind of warn you, hey, I don't like that you're getting close to me, please stay away, I don't want to bite you, you know, but I might if I have to. Um, and this is just another great view of that, that those scales that kind of make that horn of the Gaboon Viper. So. This is one of my favorite snakes that lives at the zoo. Um, he is really, really cool. An absolutely beautiful snake. The camouflage is amazing. Um, 
and they're just they're really interesting they're they're unique in the sense that they're also a little bit more stout a lot of times we think of snakes as very slender and long um the gaboon viper um is is, is pretty stout when you see him um his camouflage is really really unique here's a better uh, better photo of him you can see really blends in with uh with the surroundings you, first I look at this and I, the longer I look, the more I see of his actual body, how well it blends in. So when you come to the Detroit Zoo at the Holden Reptile Conservation Center, look closely for this, this camouflage expert. Um, he will be lying among the leaves, um, which is exactly how they would be in the wild. Like I said, they would they love to, to lie in those leaves, be nice and camouflaged, wait for their prey to come by um, so that they can, they can eat them. Um, but I know what you're probably thinking right now, okay, Gaboon Viper, really, really cool, Brad. Um, but they don't live in Michigan. So, you know, how, well, how can I help snakes in my own community? There's snakes that live in Michigan, right? There's snakes that live all, all around the world. Um, like this Eastern Massasaga. This is actually a rattlesnake that lives in Michigan and is venomous. Um, but um, even though it's venomous, much like the Gaboon Viper, attacks on human are really rare because it's also very shy and reserved. Um, you know, a lot of times snakes are more afraid of them than we are of us, right? A lot of times we have this kind of gut reaction. We see snakes and we think, oh my gosh, it's, it's kind of scary, but they're not. They're really, really cool and unique animals. Um, so my, my advice to everybody is if you see a snake in the wild, just leave it alone, right? Leave it be. Um, you know, they don't, they don't want to bother you. They're, you know, they're waiting for something else smaller to walk by to eat. Um, so leave them be where they're at. Um, but if you are really interested in snakes and you think they're really cool, you can also track reptiles you find in your community on a Michigan Herp Atlas. Um, so if you see a snake in your area, you can take a picture of it and record it and let scientists know, hey, I saw uh, an Eastern Massasago or I saw a garter snake in my backyard. It gives people an idea of where snakes live and how their population is doing. So that's a way you can help snakes in your community. Now, my challenge for everybody today is that uh, that Gaboon Viper is a camouflage expert. You can see his camouflage, his color, his patterns really helped him blend in with the surrounding. So now what we're going to do is we are going to try to make some camouflage snakes. And we're going to challenge um, a friend or family member to find those camouflage snakes. So what we're going to need different colored paper. A pencil, scissors, crayons, or markers are optional if you want to decorate your snake and make a pattern on your snake. And then you just need someone to play the challenge with. And the skills and concepts we'll be working on are camouflage and observation. So when we're making our snakes and we're hiding them, we want to think about how camouflage works, right? A lot of times, um, animals are better camouflaged in backgrounds that match their body color. If we think about the Gaboon Viper, if the Gaboon Viper, if he was out in the open, you would notice that pattern immediately and it would be very easy to see him. But when he is hiding among the leaves on the forest floor, it's really hard to see him. So think about how animals camouflage and where a body color might want to hide in a certain habitat. And then observation, we need to use those observation skills to look really closely to try to see that camouflaged animal. So I'm going to run you through my video real quick of how I made it, our supplies. So different colored paper, I use six different colors of paper. You can use as many colors as you want. Pencil to trace my snake, some scissors to cut my snake out. Um, so I stack all my papers on top of each other and draw that snake. Like I said, you can use more colors if you want less. You can use multiple colors. So if you want to use maybe you only have five uh, pieces of green paper and five pieces of white paper at home, you can just use that and make 10 snakes, five green and five white. So I'll stack them all together, cut out my snake. I did a little bit of a, a not as exciting job. I just used plain colors and made my snake pretty plain. But now I have six equal snakes, all the same size and shape, so that the size and the shape won't change the difficulty in finding them. I want them to all be the same. OK, so then once we have our snakes cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to find a friend to play the camouflage snake challenge with. So let's say I'm going to go out and hide some snakes. And I want to think about that camouflage. What makes good camouflage? What would help, you know, my red snake blend in with their surroundings? And I'm going to hide those accordingly. Don't let my friend to see it. Then I'm going to go get them and see if they can find them. Uh, and you can, you know, you can just see how long it takes someone to find it. You can even time them. Maybe, oh, you only have a minute to find the snakes, two minutes. You can kind of change up how you want to, how you want to challenge the, your friend. Um, but you can do it however you want. You can make it harder or easier. I went out and I just hid my snakes for my friend to find. But I'm, 
I'm here by myself, right? I don't, I don't unfortunately have um, any friends. So I had to do a little bit of time traveling again. That's right. We're going time traveling one more time. I went back in the past and I challenged myself to a little game of the snake challenge. Oh, here he is. Oh, hey, Brad, Brad from the past. Brad from the past. It's Brad from the future. Up here, up here. No, other side. Oh, hey. Hey. Where's Brad from the future? Well, what are you doing here again? Hey, okay, I got some viewers at home. We are going to play the snake camouflage challenge. I've hidden some snakes throughout the Ford Education Center. I need you to find those snakes. Okay, wait. So you're telling me that you came back here to the past and you hid some different colored snakes for me to find? Yes, exactly. I've hidden some different colored snakes. We're learning all about camouflage today. So I tried to hide six different colored snakes in areas that kind of match their body. I'm trying to make it challenging for you. So you got to find six snakes. Okay, so you're going to start right now. I got to start looking? Yes, people are watching. You got to go. Okay. You're not going. Go, 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 go. Okay, so Brad from the past is going to try to find those snakes. And like I said, let's try to think about that camouflage. Camouflage works better when the body color matches their surroundings, right? So when I'm hiding my snakes, I tried to kind of find areas in the zoo that looked like their body color. All right, so let's kind of see how, uh, how Brad from the past is doing right now. Okay, come on, Brad from the future. This is a little bit too easy. I know, listen, sometimes I worry about us. We get discouraged. Sometimes things are hard for us. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Yeah. So the rest will be better camouflaged? Yes, the rest will be better camouflaged. Viewers at home, you can also help. You can point to the screen. You can type in the comments if you see the camouflage snakes. Um, so this one's a little bit, a little bit harder, Brad, from the past. Okay, you found that one. Good work. Six snakes in total. Remember, six snakes. So far, we found the yellow and the brown one. And when you guys are hiding snakes at home, try to match them up. Remember, try to use that camouflage. Think about how an animal would want to hide. Okay, red on red. I see what you're trying to do but not sharp enough to fool old Brad from the past. All right, yeah, well, the next ones are harder, okay? Okay. I've got four snakes, and there's six hidden. Yes. What colors do I have left? You have black and green left. Remember, think of that camouflage. Think about where a black or a green snake might want to hide. There you go. Okay, the green on green, that was pretty tricky. Hey, thank you. One more, come on, where, where is it? All right, okay. One snake left. One snake left. Where would I, from the future, hide one more snake and a black colored snake? Hmm? Think of that camouflage. Where would it blend into its surroundings? Ah. Very good. Done. Very good. No, nicely done, Brad. Nicely done. Okay, Brad from the future. I'm going to be honest. This is pretty fun and challenging. Right? Okay, if you could say, what's, uh, what snake was the hardest to find, do you think? You know, I would probably say the two hardest snakes were found were the green snake and the black snake because you did a pretty good job of... Um, of hiding them by background colors that were really similar to their bodies. I guess you could say you did a really good job of placing them in their habitat. You did a good job camouflaging them. Thank you, hey, that's the goal, learning about camouflage. Okay, do you wanna hide some snakes for me? Oh my gosh, yes, I would love to take a turn to hide these. Okay, I'm gonna go, no peeking. I will come back and get you, okay? Sounds good. Okay, uh, everybody, so we're gonna let Brad from the past hide those snakes for me. I'll go find them in a little bit. Um, but that's what we want to be working on with this, with this challenge. Think about camouflage and think about how animals would maybe prefer to blend into areas where they can't be seen as easily. That way makes them feel safer if they're trying to hide from a predator or like the Gaboon Viper, if they're trying to hide from an animal that might become their prey. So when you're hiding your snakes, think about those colors and how animals use camouflage. So that is my challenge for you all today. If you need any inspiration, you can always come visit the Detroit Zoo. You can see 
the uh, West African Gaboon Viper or all the reptiles in the Holden Reptile Conservation Center. A lot of them are camouflage experts. Before I go, I would like to thank Meyer for supporting all of our uh, education programs this week. And if you guys would like to see more virtual vitamin Z, you can always visit our website at DetroitZoo.org. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.